Hi. So the next thing we're going to be doing is well, a simple one. I'm just going to scale this up. Good thing about having it all linked together, you see, is if I scale this up, everything scales up. So I can make this power fist actually a lot bigger. Because I received a comment while I was doing whips on this that, you know, the power fist wasn't quite big enough. So I take that kind of thing quite seriously. And I've made the power fist accordingly huge. Okay, now I'm going to work on the magazine for the back of this. So, <coughs> what I need to do really is just isolate this selection here. Obviously this is the part that we're working on last. And you can see where the magazine comes out, just here. So, this will give us a chance to work some detail in and have a pretty good time doing it. So what I'm going to do first is just look overall at the shape why am I trying to build a box? You should have told me. And I'm going to bring this back to round about there. Okay, it seems like a good size. Now, what I want to do here is do a connect. Go to my left viewport. This will enable me to just line this up this. No, not there. There we go. That should do. Reason being, I can now do a cut straight up here. There to there. Let's turn it round. And there to there. It's going to make things a little bit easier for me. Okay, now. What I want to do over here is just start doing the detailing work. So I'm going to do a bevel, just a simple zero length, bring it in. Okay, and what we're doing is adding superfluous extra detail. We don't know. Well, you may know what it's for, I don't. But it's just there basically to look good and to add interest to the model that otherwise we wouldn't have. Okay, same again here. I'm going to inset it. Now this time, I'm going to grab here, spread that into three areas. And I'm just going to shrink that down a little bit, move that to about there, then inset it by polygon. Just reduce that a tiny bit. There we go, zoom in on it. And again, just a small bevel. There we go. And that makes that shape there. To be honest, I might as well have just kept it at one bevel. I'll just do one bevel. Well, at the top here, I'll do a small inset. Just to keep the shape interesting. I can't bear it when you end up with a dull shape in your model. I've got a blank area there, which we're going to have to add something to soon. Now, on the inside of this, just here on the side of the magazine, we want the impression that there's basically a side coming in, so what I'm going to do is do a cut from here all the way down to around about here. Okay, that should do it. Now I've got a bit of cleanup work to do in here, so a little bit of target welding should sort this out. And then another cut along here. Let's get rid of this one. There we go. Just to clean it up and allow me to basically make a bit of an incision into here. Just a brief pause there for a second while I clean my mouse, which was playing up. Move that out of the way. Okay, what I'm going to do here is extrude this part 
just here and here. And we'll extrude it straight back. Now actually before I do, if you look at the top there, don't like this. Let's just scale it. Make sure it's completely flat. There we go. And I'm going to move this down so that it's running parallel with this one. There we are. And let's just straighten these edges up. I'm not 100% convinced that they're straight. Especially this one. There, that's better. Okay, and you can hear the 3D Palace disk duplicator busy churning away in the background. If any of you who follow 3D Palace news, I actually managed to get the damn thing fixed at last, which was a challenge in itself. Okay, now down here we've got this extra polygon. Extra? Extra? You know what I mean. So let's just select it and get rid of it. If it'll let us. Ha! I had a. Uh, my selection locked there. Right. So what I have to do is make a cut from here to about here. And then I can do a target weld. And then I can do a cap. Well, I can nearly do a cap. As you see, we have an open space here. Let's just have a look and see what's going on. If I just grab this polygon. Yeah, we've got an open face. That's okay. We can just use the same method as we did before. Simple cut. Then a target weld. Then a border. <coughs> okay, quick check on our model, make sure we haven't created any obscene quantities of polygons that we don't want. No, that seems fine. Alright, now I'm going to go over here. And taking these two polygons, what I'll do is hide my unselected. That just gives me this area here to work on, which makes things a little bit easier. Now I'm going to select here and here. Do an insert. I'm not inserting by polygon that I'm inserting by group. I need to do some tidy up work at the edge here, so a quick target weld. Here and here. Okay, now this middle part here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bevel it back a little bit. Like so. And then from there I'm going to bring it back just a tiny bit more like that and then back again to about here and then inside this I'm going to build some recessed kind of chambers which we have in our magazine so presumably this is to let air escape and to keep it cool or something I have no idea I know nothing about guns I could write about my knowledge of guns on the back of a crisp packet in big letters and it would just say guns Okay, so let's pull this out this way, like so. Now if you want to use maths and things, go ahead. I'm just using guesswork for the moment. Convert to edible poly. And I'm going to take this part. Control I. And just delete it off. Okay, next. I'm going to take this. And delete this bit. Okay. I need to make a few copies of this. And because I'm doing it freehand, because I'm such a daring dude. But I'm daring there. Let's say three then. And they nearly fitted. However, uh, we do have the option that we can actually reduce this one in size. And as you see, they all do. Uh, 
let's move them into a more useful position. There we are. Got to ensure they don't touch the edge, you see. Let me take these three and put them in between like so. Let me copy it down. Probably twice. Okay, jump back into perspective. And here's our original. Okay, now we can do our cooling tubes or whatever it is. Just using our one. As you see, they all join in, which is awesome. There we go. Right. Then I'm going to select everything in this scene except for the frame and just convert them. This should mean that I can now attach them all together. Like so. And then I'll attach them to this, not the other way around. Now, this bit just requires basically a little bit of the old interactive bridging tool, so... So if you're a fan of basically the 3D equivalent of popping paper, then you're in for a treat. All you've got to do is ensure that all these are connected together, and that at least one is connected to the edge. You can do it any way you want. You can make pretty patterns if you want, or... You can do it as logistically as you like. You can just have a field day. I find after I've done quite a bit of modelling, you know, it's quite relaxing doing this sort of thing, which is sad and depressing, really. But there you go. I'll never get accepted into the cool guys club. Not too many left to go, don't worry. And then we'll get on to doing something else. So if you get bored with the interactive bridging tool, which is an impossibility, then you can go and do something else instead. Maybe that's what I should pretend flangification means. Flangification means overuse of the bridging tool. Nah. What's well, something people remember? I mean, Fresnel and Fong and all those dudes managed to get remembered for their stuff. And their stuff was nowhere near as exciting as the interactive bridging tool. And be sure to tell your tutor that when you see him. I look forward to watching him froth. Okay, there we go. So now it's a case of bridging. Well, gapping. Well, as you can see, I, we didn't quite get that right. Oh, I know what the problem was. bridge. There we go. Now cap. There we go. And there's a couple of bloody great big holes in it, but we can fix those. Tremendous. Alright, so next all I need to do Select here and unhide all. As you can see, it's now part of the larger piece. Like so, and it's given it quite a nice level of detail, which is what we wanted. Okay, so up here. Now then, we have a mess in this corner that I need urgently to fix. So, this looks like a job again for Target Weld.
There we go. I think partly the error is caused by this kind of recess we have here. What I might need to do is do a quick cut actually along here. Like so. And then I can do a target weld on this. There to about there. And then there to there. There, that's better. OK, now what I need to do is get rid of this polygon for a few moments. I'm going to select this one. I'm just going to extrude it up. And then just basically mess around with the size of it a little bit. like so. Oops, wrong edge. There we go. I did it again. When will I learn? I seem to be repeatedly doing it again, in fact, which is disturbing. It must mean there's an edge just there that I keep selecting when I'm trying to drag this handle. Okay, that's fine. And then over here, I'm going to insert this, and I hate it when it does that, I really do. It just makes it into a mess. I'm going to insert it by polygon, that'll clean it up a little bit. Don't worry about the fact that this is all kind of skewy and weird. We'll fix that in a moment, incidentally. OK, I'm going to get rid of some of these edges that we don't need. Just using the backspace tool, as you can see in the top left where it says back when I hit it. Dear Chris Robson, why, oh why do you not explain the keys? How are we ever supposed to learn from your so-called tutorials? Etc, etc. Right, I need to straighten this one out as well. Actually, I very rarely get complaints, to be quite honest. Everyone always seems to really enjoy doing this sort of tutorial. Which isn't surprising, I mean... I was here at the outset when we had the boring tutorials. And trust me when I say this, okay, I mean, there were some boring ass tutorials out there before the advent of the video tutorial. And even then it took a while before video tutorials kind of got anywhere close to where they are now. I mean, the person who kind of pioneered it obviously was Jason Busby and his VTMs, which are really good. But I mean, you know, even, I mean, even today you get companies that are just producing what amounts to the 3DS Max Bible in video form. And the 3DS Max Bible isn't even good as toilet paper, quite frankly. And they charge a fortune for it. Alright, there we go, that's that back piece done. Now let's have a look at this part of the magazine here. And this is basically where I want our kind of feeder hose to come out of that attaches to our what do you call it? Our um under underslung underarm bolter fellow. So I'll bevel in here. Okay, that's where that's gonna come out. And then here, undo that one because it was a zero. It wasn't a zero length, and I needed it as a zero length bevel. And 
Okay. Now on this, obviously, I'll probably be adding riveting and other fun things like that, so I don't need to worry too much about sticking detail on the front. There isn't a massive detail on this anyway. There's just going to be some rivets. Let's check how this looks at the back. Need to fill this area in. Now the problem we have at the moment is that there is actually a polygon, which I don't think we can see because of my cunning modeling skills. There it is. So with that gone, I can now click here and cap it. There we go. And that will close that area off nicely. Yeah, nicely like. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to be using a new method, a newer method of um, riveting than you're used to if you watched the earlier kind of legacy Dreadnought 2 videos so far. So what I'm going to do, um, what I'm going to do in the next part is probably do the hose from here to the actual bolter, which will go down here, and then go on to the rivets. So until that happy merry day, see you in the next part, bye bye for now.